Well, good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Baldwin Sunday service. We're going to start the service off with a celebration of Sing to the King. to save.
Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm glad you're here. I've been noticing all the comments, everybody saying hi to everybody, uh, mamas and daughters saying hi to each other. I'm just so thankful that you've joined us once again. Um, Abby, thank you for being here. You make, you're making your dad look a lot better up here, so that needs to be, yes. Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, sorry about that, David. Um, but uh, no, thank you for, for being with, uh, with us today. I, you know, this is sort of a day for me in my heart just to have a message. Uh, the focus that I have this morning is just praying for you. Um, boy, many of you, you, you come to this time and you're saying, I just need strength today, right? I need wisdom. Um, I'm seek, seeking God's direction. I need a refresh, uh, refreshing or a renewal, uh, a fresh touch from God today. Um, so throughout uh, this time, the message time, I'm praying that we'll renew the calling that God has called us to, each of us as a church. And I have a special scripture I want to share with you before we're praying. Um, but you know, as always, uh, a reminder to you, this is our time not only to connect with God, but to connect with one another. And I encourage you, write comments down below. Um, now, I will say this. If you're just using uh, the worship service as a background, take an opportunity and just be still and know that He is God and sit before your television or your iPads or your phones or whatever it is that you're before your computer and um, take this time and make this your number one priority. Uh, sing with us. Um, torture your family if you're only making a joyful noise. It's okay. And, uh, but, you know, the one, our audience of one is the one that's most important for you to sing to. And he knows your heart. And I'm thankful that he's here welcoming us today. Uh, not only are we connecting with him, we're connecting with one another. So continue to do that. I would say in the comment section, if you have an encouragement or prayer request, if you want to uh, share scripture, please feel free to, because I know people are reading those things and you're encouraging each other uh, this morning. We're here to worship though. Um, a couple of ways as we're worshiping uh, that, that we want to reach out to you. <clears throat> if you have a need and there's something that you're struggling with, you just need somebody to talk to. As we've been doing the last uh, month or so, uh, we have a prayer line that's open for you. We have people that are ready to answer the phone, 904-266-4222. Call to the church, and um, there's somebody uh, that's ready to, to love you, to share with you, to listen to you. Uh, maybe you're feeling alone. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe uh, you're just down today. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, as God draws you, you say, hey, I've been rejecting, I've been running away from him, and today is my day to, run, to turn to him and draw close to him, and you just need somebody to pray with you about that, I ask you, just call us uh, again, 904-266-4222 as a prayer line. But also, if you look onto the website, and, and this is throughout the week, any time that you need uh, to connect with us, that you have uh, a need, that you need help, um, fbcbaldwin.com, and if you'll click on the uh, uh, help tab, uh, it's, I think it's the fourth tab down uh, on the on the on the uh, website, and click the connect with us, and uh, that'll give us uh, sort of it'll send straight to us and let us know how we can meet your needs. Please fill it in and say I have this need. Please pray for me or whatever it is. We're here to help, and so we want you to know that. Um, also. Um, you know, on there, if you, uh, there's a donate tab on the website. I want to always remember that. Um, thank you, church, for always giving and always being cheerful in your giving. Uh, some of you are still bringing your, your offerings and your tithes to the church. Uh, we love to see when you come. We, we do what we can to keep our distance. Uh, but at the same time, it's a wonderful thing. Some of you are dropping it off. Some of you are mailing it in. And then many of you are, have already made that plunge and you're going online. It's a secure website. Uh, if you look on the uh, fbcball1.com, uh, click the Donate tab, and it'll give you all the rest of the instructions that you need. Uh, and thank you for being willing to continue to see God's uh, uh, ministry uh, continue on here at First Baptist Church of Baldwin. So thank you for that. Now, before we pray, I want to share with you a scripture, and we're going to pray. And then we have one more song, uh, Lead Me to the Cross. And um, this is a, a prayer, and you're going to hear another prayer in just a moment during the message time. Um, and both of these are out of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, and I'm just going to read this and let it stand where it is, and we're going to pray together. It says, For this reason, I bow, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. 
that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit and the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's a really great prayer, isn't it? We pray that for you today, that God will continue to strengthen you, continue to draw him close, you close to him, that you'll see him and see his work in your life and take this opportunity and allow him to breathe that refreshing touch in your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you so much for already working in our midst. There may be somebody this morning that's online that's just struggling. I pray for them. We all pray for them right now. I know our church is joining together. There's somebody that just needs an encouraging touch today. There's somebody that needs conviction of the Holy Spirit because right now they're running from you and they're rejecting you and they're rebelling against you. I don't know who that is, but Father, I know there's somebody that's listening saying, that's me. Help them to go to the cross of Christ to see their sins for what they are. And Father, that's each and every one of us. Every day we come before you. And Father, we ask you to take our sin. And Father, there's a refreshing renewal that takes place when we turn to the cross or we turn back to the cross. If there's one that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they've never been saved, may today be the day that they enter into a personal relationship with Jesus who loves them, with a God has pursued them. And Father, I, I know you know who they are. And I pray by the time we get done with the services today that they'll have taken this opportunity and claimed Jesus as their King and as their Savior and as their Lord. Father, it's essential for us we turn from our sin and turn to you and turn to the cross of Christ. And I'm thankful for forgiveness that comes through the cross. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. That is the gospel. That is our hope. Help us to cling to that today. And I'll pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
let's pray. Amen. So glad that we've had this time to worship together. Um, As we go into the message this morning, I want to think about this subject today. Open our eyes, Lord. And uh, if you hopefully you have your Bibles uh, handy and uh, you're ready to open them to the book of Luke, chapter 24. Uh, We're going to read verse 13 through 35. Um, You know. uh, I'm going to share with you in a moment another passage out of the book of Ephesians. It's another prayer uh, for the church. I just really feel like uh, in my heart of hearts today uh, to just uh, lay that out to you that uh, God is revealing himself to each of us. And I pray that he'll do his work in his church more than we've ever seen before. Um, That he'll do his work in our world uh, more than we've ever seen before. He's always been working. Uh, Sometimes we recognize it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we accept it, sometimes we don't. Uh, But I'm thankful this morning that uh, he is there revealing himself to us and opening our eyes. Um, This is another resurrection account. Uh, Even though Easter Sunday was a couple of weeks ago, we're still celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, That's an every day, every moment of every day, that is what gives us hope. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, I pray you do. Uh, This morning we'll be beginning in verse number 13, the book of Luke chapter 24. It says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which is seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was when they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have had with one another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you have not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and all our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they said they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And at beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, they took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to them. 
Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? And they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. One more time, let me pray for us. Father, I pray that you would just speak to us, that you would remind us of your goodness and your grace, that you would affirm to us just what it is that you're trying to, to the work that you're trying to do, and that, Father, no matter what, when all is said and done, they will be found clinging to you and to the cross of Christ, our only hope. We can't do this on our own, Lord. We need you. We cry out to you. I pray for us this morning as we just seek after you. The Father, that you would do your work as I know you already are. There's one that has never been saved, never given their life to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Would you draw them to yourself now that they may claim you as their king? And I'll pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 105, simply says this, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. You know, um, I shared with you that I was going to, to share with you another passage of scripture over in the book of Ephesians. And it says this over in the book of Ephesians in uh, chapter 1 and verse number 15. It says this, and again, this is just all of, the, all of what I'm doing to, to sort of lay the attitude of prayer um, that we pray for one another, that we're seeking the Lord. It says this, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints, do not cease to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, and the eyes, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, the inheritance in all the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also and that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I think about the church and the fact that God is not done with us. He is still working through his church to share the light to a world that's in darkness. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful he chooses to work through us and use us. Our job is to make sure that we place our lives in accordance with his word. What did I share earlier? Your word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. God directs us, God guides us, God leads us as we've been singing about this morning. And he, by the way, is more than able to do all of that. He is mighty to save, but he is mighty to keep. He is mighty to lead. And um, I am so thankful that as we, as his church, gather together, when we look into his word, we receive his direction, his guidance, and then we just simply live it out. Problem comes when he speaks and we say, I'm going to do my own thing. When he reveals himself to us. Now, just think about this for a moment and, and where we were in Luke chapter 24. 
And I, I'm going to sort of be all over the place with this story. But, you know, the end of this story, the two disciples, Cleopas and a lot of people figure that it was his wife, came back to the disciples and said, look, just, just to let you know, he is risen. They were excited. Through the breaking of bread, they knew this was the resurrected Jesus. We don't have the Lord's Supper every time we gather together. And I've got to tell you, it was a special time a couple of weeks ago when we did that. We'll do that soon again. It was just a special time, even though I know that uh, I was here alone and you were in your homes alone, but yet we were gathered together. There's something about breaking of bread and breaking the bread of the Word of God that draw, draws us not only to Him, but to each other. But the question is, what do we do with that once He's opened our eyes? Are you searching for direction? How has God been speaking to you? And more importantly, because we know He is, how are you listening? Now, uh, I, get, I got this illustration this past week from uh, none other than Walmart. Um, I don't know if you've gone to Walmart lately, uh, you know, and uh, you go in there and, of course, uh, all of the employees are wearing masks. And, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I put my mask on when I go in and, and uh, you know, they have these signs on the floor that said, you know, help us, you know, keep social distancing and thank you for doing that and six feet apart and all of that. One thing I've noticed, though, in going to Walmart, people don't really listen and follow directions. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, and, and this is how I know. In the aisles um, between, uh, you know, when you're going down the aisles, um, they have these signs that say, one way. The green, I think green, I think I'm not sure it says one way, this way, go this way. But then on the other end, it has a red do not enter sign, something like that. It's very clear that they want you to, the traffic to go, you know, different direction to go one way. How many people did I see that were going the wrong way? Now, before I judge them, let me just tell you, I found myself going the wrong way a couple of times, you know, so I can't be critical of them. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm walking and all of a sudden it's like, and maybe let's just stop. Have you ever found yourself in your car, and this is a little bit more dangerous, not, you know, walking traffic, but driving. Have you ever found in your car where you're turned down a road and the road was one way, but you, yet you were going the wrong way? Um, that's a pretty scary proposition there. But I asked myself the question when, I, when um, I finally got into the groove of everything and I was going back and forth between the aisles the right way. I asked, why do we not follow simple directions? There's probably a lot of reasons for that. Um, I think for me, a lot of times, uh, and what I found uh, when I was over at Walmart with this, um, that I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't notice. I was in La La Land. I think I was looking at the Little Debbie Isle and wondering, you know, you have talked about the Little Debbie Isle, and you know, starting Monday, we declared diet time, right, this past Monday, so we've had no sugar, so I walked very sadly down the Little Debbie Isle thinking I can't have any more of those. Uh, they're all put up, but um, maybe I'm not paying attention. Maybe I'm just not noticing the directions that were laid out for me. There may be a reason why some people are going the wrong direction, and maybe it's just because of the fact that they just don't care. It says go one way, but I really don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do. Or maybe go one step further. The rules really don't re apply to me, right? Or how about this? They really don't mean it. They say this, but you know, nobody's going to pay attention. Nobody's going to care. And by the way, they can't enforce it either. It's like, is the Walmart security going to come and tell me I'm going the wrong way in the aisle? Right? Or maybe somebody said, well, you know what? Um, I'm not changing. They need to change their rules. Now, there could be more than that. And I know that's a simple illustration here, but I think to myself, when God speaks, why don't we heed? Why don't we listen when we don't? I'm thankful for that sweet obedience, that moment when he speaks and we say, yes, Lord. 
these guys, these these uh, disciples, they were walking on the road to Emmaus, and I, I think about um, you know the road to Emmaus, and and this uh, this appearance of Jesus to these disciples put Emmaus on the map, right? And uh, we we look at and, and the significance of this moment in their lives. And what were they doing? They were just having simple conversation. In verse 14, they talked together of all the things which had happened. They were discussing what had been going on. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, these last few weeks especially, but not just these last few weeks, in our lives, we discuss everything, right? We've talked about conversation after conversation of, of different subjects, of different things, things that aggravate us, things that we're complaining about, things that we don't like. Sometimes it's things that maybe is, have happened to us. We go down memory lane and we talk about sometimes the good and we talk about the bad. They were just having a conversation with each other. And they were talking about all the things that had happened. But it's interesting to note the perspective that they had here. Uh, and the Bible also, you know, lets us know by this time they had already heard, right? They had already heard that when they, when, uh, they came to the tomb and the bo Jesus' body wasn't there, um, as I've said to you a couple of weeks ago, it's amazing to know not only did Jesus tell them that he was going to come back from the dead, that he was going to die, but then he was going to rise again. But time after time, until he made that resurrection appearance to them, they were, they were devastated. And just gives an indication, a look at to what they were speaking about here. The Bible says in verse 16, their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. Um, you know, as they talked, and this is uh, to me, and I just want to make this point. In verse 15, it says, as they conversed, or while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. We may not be looking for him, but he is pursuing us. And sometimes it's important for us to understand at the most maybe inconvenient time, or maybe the time that we're not looking, the time that we're not expecting it, Jesus shows up. As he showed up in your life, I know he is. And we've talked about this, and I, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but these are the situation, the situation that we find ourselves in, the circumstances that we find ourselves in, that Jesus is speaking. He's speaking in volumes that some of us may not have heard in a long time. If you're a child of God, there are some times in our lives that we walk and we just take for granted the blessing of the riches of, of, of the glory of Jesus Christ and our calling that we have in him. But I ask myself this question, when he shows up, am I ready? Am I listening? Am I paying attention? Well, they were just having ordinary conversation. Jesus showed up and he asked them, he said, what kind of conversation is this that you have had with one another as you walk and are sad? What kind of conversation is this? And by the way, did you see what he threw in there? And, you know, as you're talking to each other and you're sad, why are you sad? And of course, you know, it's Jesus. He knew. And he knew what he was about to do in revealing himself. The question came, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem that you have not known the things which, are, which had happened there in these days? And that just lets you know this was no small event that everybody was talking about it. So much so that as they perceived this man who was walking with them said, are, are you the only person that does not know? And Jesus said, what things? And said, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth. That was the most important topic that they were discussing. And I, I have to tell you, uh, you know, as his church, that's the most important topic. Uh, person, the most important topic that we can talk about is Jesus and his salvation. Every day we have the opportunity to just focus on him. While well, these guys were they, were, they were sad and they were trying to process what was going on. And, 
And this was their perception here, uh, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, who's a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And their perspective, their mindset was, he's dead now. And he, he may have said some good things, but he was a prophet and he came and he was mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests, our ruler, delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And then they said this in verse 21. They said, but we were hoping <laughs> that he was going to be the one who was going to redeem Israel. We were just hoping beyond hope. And our hopes are dashed. As they continue to talk, they continue to share of how the women arrived at the tomb early and didn't find his body and that they had seen a vision of angels saying that he was alive. And I'm asking myself the question, why? Why weren't they happy? Why weren't they, why weren't they just saying, hey, he's alive? And by faith, receiving that. Now, I've got to understand, with their very own eyes, and our eyes, our physical part of our being can deceive us. And distract us from what truly spiritual is going on in our lives and what God is doing. Don't be distracted by circumstances. Don't be distracted by the things that are going on around us. It's only telling part of the story. And maybe you're feeling defeated. Maybe you're down. Maybe you're to that point and you're saying, you know, I'm about ready to give up on my faith. Where is God? Is he not on his throne anymore? Is he not mighty anymore? And of course, we know the answer to that, that he is still mighty. He is still in control. He is still our King of kings and Lord of lords. Of course, Jesus' response, O oh, foolish one, slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter in his glory? And I like this verse right here, in verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Just throw this out to you. For me, as I preach, the most important subject that I give, that I preach on, that I teach on, is Jesus Christ. None other. He is our only hope. He is our only way. Now through that, as we grow in him, we learn what it means to be in Christ, how to live in Christ, how to walk in him. But you look at all of the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New. His word points us to Jesus. Concerning himself, he spoke. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that conversation? He was just speaking to them about himself. Revealing things. And I'm going to deal with that subject of revealing in a moment. Of course, they had this. And the Bible tells us as he was speaking to them, and this was the indication uh, of this, uh, that they said, did not our heart burn within us when he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Again, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. And when he was speaking, they knew that they were not just ordinary words. You know those moments when God is speaking to you when his word is just being revealed and, and, and almost the scales that come off of our eyes and we say, God, you are so good. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. Thank you for revealing yourself to me. And there's a burning, a hunger, a desire for more. You instinctively know that and there may be somebody that's listening to this this morning and you're saying, you know, I, uh, I have been to that place where I've been substituting for my fulfillment and my joy and my purpose in my life everything under the sun. I've been pursuing this and I've been pursuing that and I've been pursuing this and I've been pursuing that. And if I just get this, I know my life will all come into place. And then when you get whatever this is, you realize that you have a desire for more. 
It was interesting this past weekend, some of you watched the draft, the NFL draft a little bit different. It was all virtual and uh, nobody in person or anything, but I just sat, and as they would uh, have cameras in the, the homes of those that were hopefully, possibly, laying all of their hopes and their lives on being drafted in the NFL, many of you watched the Jaguars, some of you were pleased, some of you weren't pleased. Yeah, you know, it's going to be what it is. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the one making all those decisions, right? And you probably are too, even though all of us have an opinion on it. But here are these guys that are laying their hopes and whether or not they're going to get drafted. And some of them, you, you know, you've seen through the years, you know, if they're supposed to go in the first round, they end up going in the fourth round. And it's like, I, you know, I've, I've got a bad attitude now because they didn't pick me when I thought I should have been picked. And then they get to the NFL. And the glory. And, and even if you go all the way to the Super Bowl, right? What a glorious thing it is, right? Until the next day after the Super Bowl, it's like, okay, so what now? It always leaves us with what now? When Jesus speaks, it is always satisfying. Their hearts burn within them. In fact, they ask him to stay with them and so the Bible says that as he came to pass, he sat at the table with them and he took bread in verse 30 and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And I like this in verse 31, that, and their eyes were opened and they knew him. Their eyes were opened and they knew him. Aren't you thankful through his revealing himself to us that our eyes are open and that we can know him? Of course, the Bible says that he vanished out of their sight. What an amazing thing. Do you notice what took place here? They were walking with him. He was sharing his word with them. They saw a, a mighty revealing to them. And then they simply went back and told it to the others. In a sense, that's our path. We walk with him every day. We walk in the spirit of God. As we're walking, we're investing in the word of God, reading the word of God, allowing him to reveal himself to us that not only uh, we can, can see what it is, the plan that he has for us, but that we can go and tell others about it as well to carry out the great commission. That's a pattern that we have. And it's not just an ordinary life that God has called us to. I ask you, how long has it been since your faith has been growing and vital and living and all of those things? And if that's you and you say, man, it can't get any sweeter than what it is, praise God, right? But if it's not you, don't kick yourself, don't beat yourself up, but take this moment, 10.50 a.m. on Sunday morning, And say, God, this is the moment that I quit making it an ordinary thing. That I quit taking you for granted. And that I turn to you. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see you. In the context of this scripture, in the context of just hearing these things, I do go back to the prayer for the church knowing that they had seen Jesus, knowing they were excited, knowing what the work that, that God had done, raising Jesus from the dead. And by the way, just let me say this to you, and, and we're going to be back in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 in just a second. It's important for us to understand that what gives us hope as believers in Christ is that Jesus is risen. The resurrection is our hope every day. We don't put our trust in our programming. We don't put our trust in our talents and in our abilities. We don't put our trust in, in our, the opportunities that we offer or what we do. We put our trust wholly in the fact of this message. Jesus died, was buried, he rose again. And by the way, let me not stop there. He ascended to the heavenly father, sits at the right hand of God the father, and he is our soon coming king. He will return. 
And I've told you before, it just gives evidence what we've been going through these last few weeks, that we need to be ready. I don't know the events that are going to come and the days to come. I know what the scripture lies out as the outline for us, the rapture of the church, the tribulation, the second coming of Christ, all of these things. My job, your job, our job, we turn to the word of God. We get to know Jesus more. We sit at the feet of Jesus. We learn from his word. We grow in his word. We serve him. We serve one another. We witness to the world. Be ready. I look in Ephesians chapter 1 and, and keeping these things in mind. I'm going to give you a couple of things as we close today. What our prayer for the church should look like. What we pray for. For his church. The Apostle Paul was speaking to the church at Ephesus and he said these things in verse 15. Therefore I also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. There's two things that uh, Paul was thankful for. Verse 15, what did he say? When I heard of your faith and your love for all the saints. Now, I think not only just their faith, as they uh, were born again and saved in Christ. But I think it communicates their faithfulness to the work that God has called them for and called them to. And one thing that never ceases to amaze me is I've been here at First Baptist Church of Baldwin for 21 years. Boy, I'm thankful for you. Have there been moments that we have been imperfect? Oh, yeah. You know it. There have been moments this pastor has been far short of the goal that I know I need to be. But I'm thankful that we have an opportunity to exhibit the faith that's inside. You know, faith will produce faithfulness if we draw close to him. I'm thankful for your faith. I'm thankful for your faith through this time. I'm thankful when I see posts on Facebook or Instagram or, or Twitter or whatever it is, or when I hear somebody that has just exhibited their faith in a way and said, God, you are so amazing to work through your ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And for that, I'm truly thankful. But I'm also thankful for the love. As Paul was thankful for the church's love at Ephesus for all the saints, I'm thankful for the love that we share with one another. And I, you'll never know what it does for me when we're sort of making comments when I see them. And while the guys are up here worshiping, I'm worshiping, worshiping with them. But I also have my phone out just looking at comments and just praying for all the names that I see that come by. And it is such a good thing to see people say, I miss you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Um... Don't hold it back, y'all. There may be that one person who just needs to hear those words, I love you in the Lord. They will know us by our love. There's nothing worse than having a divided church, a church that is petty and prideful. And there's nothing greater than a church that will love God with all of our heart and love one another. Paul said, I do not cease to give thanks for you in verse 16, making mention of you in my prayers. I, I just want you to know this, and um, again, it just this is what sparks it in me, that we have not stopped praying for you. And when you feel all alone, just know this, God's doing his work. And that we're praying for you, and we're here for you. And I hope and pray, I know we're here for one another. But he said this, I pray these things that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Hmm. First thing that we pray for, and these are going to be really quick, by the way. I know it's 1056. We'll be done in a second. I intended it this way this morning. 
that we pray for, what does it first say? The spirit of wisdom and knowledge of Christ. Wisdom and knowledge of Christ. It said in verse 17 again, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. Wisdom, the ability to be able to apply that knowledge, right? But let's think about that revelation. I told, talked to you about revelation a moment ago, and, and Cleopas and his wife uh, and the disciples, they receive what they received because Jesus revealed himself to them. He hasn't stopped revealing himself. In fact, this word over in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, talking about revelation, literally means to uncover, to expose, to make known. He's doing that all the time. I know that he's doing that in your life. The question is, are you listening? I'm thankful that we have, have a revealing God. I'm thankful. You think about knowledge for a moment. Um, I'm thankful that he has given us the knowledge of himself. You know, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how he communicates. That's how he reveals himself to us. The apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 3 in verse number 10 simply said it this way, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, that I may know him. So number one, pray for the church that we might have wisdom, revelation, knowledge of Christ. Number two, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That's number two, the hope of his calling. It's not just wishful thinking, but it is a certain expectation. It is, let me put it to you this way, assurance. Assurance of what? Assurance of the calling that he has given to us. That word calling literally has the idea of a vocation or of a work. Every believer in Christ has a purpose and has a place in the work of God. A lot of times, and, and that's the video that we talk about, the church is still the church and God is still doing his work and we are still called according to his purpose to know his will. But that word, huh, hope, assurance of his calling. Romans chapter 5 in verse number 5 uh, simply says this, Now hope does not disappoint the assurance of God, the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, through his resurrection, does not disappoint. You ever been disappointed before? You, you put your hope into something and it just fell flat, short of expectation. God never will. The hope that we have through Jesus Christ will never disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. He has poured his, himself into us, his life into us, Filled to overflowing the hope of his calling. Do you have hope? Do you have the assurance of his calling today? He still called you. You may feel useless. You may feel like you don't have purpose, but he has called you to a certain hope. In fact, um, you know, as we continue on, not only the wisdom of knowledge of Christ, not only the hope of his calling, but what else does it say? It says this, not only... Uh, the hope of his calling, but what are, in the last part of verse 18, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? The riches of the glory of the, his inheritance in the saints. Um, now these, you know, these are just directly from the scriptures right here. Our prayer that we would realize the riches that we have through Jesus Christ, the glory of our inheritance. And by the way, in the saints. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I gave you a passage of scripture over in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 um, that we've been called to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven just for you. 
that we might know what the true riches are. And it's so far beyond what people will cheapen it to be. And you put your hope in God and you're going to get that car that you've always wanted or that home that you've always... It's so much more than that. Don't put your hope and trust in the temporary. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to whose riches? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That we might know the wisdom of knowledge of Christ. That we might know the hope of his calling. That we might know the riches of the glory of his inheritance. And lastly, that we might know the greatness of his power. The greatness of his power. What does it say in verse 19? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? And I should have put that word in there, by the way. The exceeding greatness, a, gr a power that has no limits. That word exceeding literally means going beyond, surpassing, excelling, outdoing, great in its, in its extent, very extensive, far beyond what we can imagine, the power of God that he has given to us. He doesn't expect us to do this thing on our own. And in fact, the Bible tells us, um, as we live in his power, the Bible tells us that, that we are to be strong in the Lord, the book of Ephesians say, in the power of his might. I am so thankful for God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, has quickened us together, made us alive with Christ by grace are you saved, and has raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The greatness of his power. The book of Acts, chapter 1, in verse number 8, Jesus simply spoke these words to the disciples. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Power. Exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And then it goes on to say, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the, with that which is to come. And he has put everything under his feet and gave him to be it over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and in all. And I think to myself, what a mighty thing it is to know the power of God that same power that rose Jesus from the dead. You've heard songs about it, but you know, this is scripture right here. We have to tap into that power and our strength only comes from the one who is our strength. He will enable us to carry on to completion that which he began in us. You aren't alone. Just know this. You feel weary? It's okay. And our weakness, he is strong. As we close this morning, you know, thinking about open our eyes, Lord, and thinking about the disciples who saw Jesus that very first resurrection day, and he revealed himself to them, he is still doing that work in you. I'm going to ask if you would, just to bow your heads, close your eyes. Would you just pray with me right now? As we close this morning, there is nothing greater than us knowing that he is doing his work. The question is, are you listening? And will you respond? If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we've already talked about it. Jesus died and rose again, but you must be willing to apply that to your lives. That forgiveness that he has, the most important thing that you need in your life right now is God's forgiveness and a right relationship with him through Jesus Christ. It is available, but it's not automatic. You must believe on him. We'll share scripture that we a lot of times will share. How do you 
move from death to life? How do you move from, from, from dead in your trespasses and sins to being alive in Christ? How do you move from being lost to being found, from blind to being, to, to being able to see? The Bible tells us very simply, cry out to him. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not saved today, if you've never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you call it to him right now? I'm going to help you with this prayer. Ask you to just pray and, and seek the Lord and ask him to save you today. If you've never done that, you've never entered in a relationship, like I've told you before, it's not about a religion. It's not about the building. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus who loves you, pursues you, died for you, and rose again. And if that's you this morning, would you just cry out to him, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord, I know those sins have separated me from you. But today I give my life to you, Lord. I turn from my sin and I turn to the cross of Christ. I know that Jesus died and rose again. And I apply that to my heart, to my life, and ask you to forgive me, Lord. Pay my sin debt. Lord, give me a right relationship with you. Jesus is my only way, and I'll make that my declaration. Through faith, I give my life to you. And I will love you for the rest of my days till I see you face to face in eternity. Now, your prayer may have looked something like that. Maybe you just cried out and said, God, I just need you to save me. Whatever that is, if you're willing to turn from your sins and turn to Christ, the cross of Christ, know that that is the remedy for your sin today. That is your prescription. And that you've taken that today and applied that to your heart. The Bible says that the angels of heaven are rejoicing. And if that's you today and you've given your life to Christ, let me just ask you once again, if you'll just have the courage. Maybe you want to put in the comments, I just got saved. Praise the Lord. Go public with your faith. Let everybody know. Just like the, uh, the disciples went back after they had that experience with Jesus and said, we have seen the Lord. And today you've experienced him in a very real way. And maybe you just need to say those words. Make that your proclamation. I just got saved. I've just given my life to him. But so that we can help you, would you just call the prayer line this morning, 904-266-4222. We'll show you the next steps. Baptism, growth in the Lord. We'll rejoice with you. Or maybe... Go on fbcball1.com and click the My Decision tab and fill that out to let us know that you've just given your life to Christ. However it is that you, we want to be able to help you and come alongside you if you'll do that. We just want to be there for you. Maybe church, you're here. And there's something that you need to give to him. Would you just take this moment and say, God, i got to give it back to you. I've been taking you for granted. I've been claiming Christ, but I sure haven't been a light. Would you just take a moment as he's revealed himself to you once again, be excited about your faith, and ask him to renew you today. Thank you for what you've done today, Lord. I pray your blessings as we leave uh, this official time of worship to live our lives of worship now, to be a witness to a world that so desperately needs to hear the hope that is found only in Jesus Christ. Thank you for your work that you've done in us today. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for opening our eyes that we may see. Now just help us to simply live it out. And I'll pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Continue to keep on keeping on for Jesus. We'll see you soon.
This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. 